Brothers and sisters, welcome to the next lecture of our Quran Dora series. Uh, our Imam, Imam Musim Kempson, will be delivering the lecture on Uthman, radiallahu anhu, companion and martyr. Uh, Imam Wasim Kempson, as many of you know, is our Imam here. Uh, he has uh, graduated from Al Medina University and achieved uh, recognition from many established organizations. So, without further ado, I'll introduce and pass over to the Sheikh. Jazakallah khair. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala khayri khalqillahi ajma'een. Nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Salamu allahi alaykum wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuh. The only recognition that one really seeks, of course, is the recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizes us and is pleased with us all, inshaAllah ta'ala. <coughs> this is one of those evenings and one of those nights where we mention one of those great companions. And it's important for us from time to time to mention these alam and jibal, to mention these great people and these great mountains of knowledge and great pillars that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to this dunya. It's very important for us to recognize and understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and was pleased with the Sahaba. And likewise, as Muslims, we respect, we love, and are pleased with the companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum. And there are many examples in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises and says that He is pleased with the mu'mineen, with the believers, i.e. of course specifically the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Fatih, لَقَدَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with the believers who gave their pledge to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam underneath the tree, Bayat al-Ridwan. So indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them and we are pleased with them for individuals and people whom that we love and we wish to aspire to be like. And opposing that, that we hate and we despise anyone who despises the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anyone who swears or curses or disrespects anyone of the Sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhim, فَنَحْنُ بُرَاءً مِنْهُمْ That we are away from them and we are absolved from those people. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَا تَسُبُّ أَصْحَابِ That do not swear or say anything against my companions. فَلَوْ أَنَّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْفَقَ مِثْلُ أُحُدُ ذَهَبَ مَا بَلَغَ مُدَّ أَحَدِهِمْ وَلَا نَصِيفًا That even if one of you was to give in charity the size of Jabal Uhud in gold, that that would not equate to or be similar to one mud. A mud is this, to what the companions gave, or even half of that. This is what the companions, radiallahu anhum, what they did for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this short muqaddimah, what I'm mentioning here, is very important for us. Because when we mention these names like Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali, radiallahu anhum, any of these companions, we must know their place. And we recognize what they did. Otherwise, they may just simply to be as qasas, that they are just stories. But rather, it is not just qasas that we want to take from them stories. Rather, we want to take from them is ibar. What we want to take from them is benefits from their lives, radiallahu ta'ala anhum. So if you see anyone who swears and disrespects their companions, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ سِنْدِيقٌ That you should know that that person is a heretic, and this is not from the way of the Salaf al-Salih. It is not the way of the righteous predecessors. So these few moments that we have here together, let us speak about an Imam Jalil, a great Imam, one of the closest companions to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, a person who is given the name Dhunnurain, 
the possessor of the two lights. Or Sahibul Hijratain, the one who made the two emigrations. Before Uthman radiallahu anhu, before the coming of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, he was a beloved individual to the Quraysh. The Quraysh, they loved Uthman radiallahu anhu. And he was a well-established individual in the community. And he was a person, Dhumal, who had wealth and standing in the community. He was a person that did not prostrate to any of the idols of that with the Quraysh that they delved in. Rather, he was a person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purified and protected, even in the days of al Jahiliyyah. On one occasion, it is known that Uthman radiallahu anhu, he desired to marry a woman before the coming of the prophethood of the Prophet alayhi salatu He had a very strong desire and wish to marry a woman. But this wasn't any old or any woman. Rather, this was the daughter of the best of people. This was the daughter of the best person to walk upon the earth. None other than the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He desired and had this wish that he would marry Ruqiyya radiallahu anha. This is something that he had in, in himself. At the time, of course, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had in fact married his daughter Ruqiyya radiallahu anha to Utba, who was who? The son of Abu Lahab. And this is something which caused a great strain on the heart of Uthman radiallahu anhu. So he was at home on one occasion. And his auntie, who was also Aqila, was a very clever person, a well-grounded person. She came into the house and she said to him, Hal al khabar? Have you heard the news? And he said, what news is that? She said, Ja'a Nabi, that the Prophet has come. So he went out to find out what the situation was. On the way, he met Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he said to Abu Bakr, Have you heard the news? He said, What news is this? He said, Apparently, that there is a Nabi, there is a Prophet who has appeared. He said, Yes, I have heard of it. I have heard of him. And he explained some of the characteristics of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that he was taking the way, taking the people away from ibadat al asnam, from the worship of idols and awthan to ibadat Allah, to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa taala. He said, "Where is this person? This person being Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam." He said, "Fi bayti fulan, that is in the house of so and so." So he went there, and when he came face to face with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "My eyes were filled with the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and my ears were filled with the voice and the speech of Allah subhanahu wa taala." And he said, "Instantly, it was easy for me to make the declaration: Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wa annaka Rasulullah." That I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah, and that indeed you are the messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is when you see a person whose heart is pure, naqi, and that the person remains upon fitrah, that the person remains upon the pure state that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created every single person in. Now Abu Lahab, who was Adawalillah who was an enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and who was also an enemy of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses concerning Abu Lahab. Tabbat yada Abi Lahab wa tab, ma aghna anhu ma luhu wa ma kasab. That his name, and he had a great name amongst the Quraysh, will not benefit him. And his wealth, and what wealth he had would not benefit him as well. And his wife would be with him in the Nar. 
if he wanted to state that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a liar, all he had to do was say what? Because this surah, Surah Al-Masad, states that Abu Lahab will be from the inhabitants of the hellfire. And this is in the early times, just after, let's say, the third year after the call of the Prophet Alayhi Wasallam. So it's very, very early revelation. All he had to do was what? He used to say, Amantu Billah. I believe in Allah and I follow Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they would say, Look, say, here the Quran is saying that I am from the people of Hellfire and I have believed. But he never said that. And this is the miracle of the speech of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That Abu Lahab was indeed to be from inhabitants of Hellfire, regardless. So Abu Lahab began wanting to hurt, to hurt and harm the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he went to his son Utbah. He said, Talliq hadhi al Divorce this woman. Meaning who? Urqayya radiallahu anha. He wanted to harm the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even through his daughter. So he said to Utbah, why? Uh, Utbah replied, why should I do this? He said, we are going to do as much as we can to harm this man Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Utbah, he divorced her. Fariha Uthman. Uthman became happy in himself. So anyhow, once this news reached Uthman radiallahu anhu in himself, as we mentioned, he became happy. Maybe now there is an opportunity for him to marry the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he called Uthman. He said, will you marry my daughter? And another narration, Uthman radiallahu anhu, he went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he proposed to the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ruqiyya. And the Prophet alayhi wa sallam married his daughter, Ruqiyya to Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. He now became the possessor of a nur, the nur. The possessor of one light. On the night of the marriage, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he entered into the home of his daughter Ruqiyya, and also there Uthman radiallahu anhu was now his son-in-law. What a father-in-law to have! Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said to his daughter, the Prophet alayhi wa sallam said to his daughter, Ya Buniya, yani, oh my daughter, Ahsini ila Abi Abdullah. Be good and be nice to Abu Abdullah, yani Uthman radiallahu anhu. Fa innahu ashba, ashbahu ashabi bi khuluqa. That he is the companion that resembles me most in manners. And the man of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was what? Al-Qur'an. Kana khuluquhu al-Qur'an. So this is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said regarding Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So Uthman radiallahu anhu remained married to Ruqayya for a number of years. And then, ishtadda al-adhab. Then the punishment became very severe on the Muslims. And then the Prophet ﷺ permitted and allowed the Muslims to make the first hijrah to Habasha. And Uthman radiallahu anhu took his wife Ruqiyya and they stayed in Al Habasha for a number of years until they then returned to Mecca. And then al Thaniya. The second hijrah was made permissible for them to Al Madina al Nabawiya. It is well known in the second year after Hijrah, there was the first great battle for the Muslims against the Kuffar. Ma'arakut al-Badr, the battle of Badr, in which the Prophet sallallahu gathered together 310 or 312 or 13 or 14 of the believers to raise the flag of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah against 1,000 well-equipped 
from the kuffar. Uthman radiallahu anhum was with them. But his wife Ruqiyya radiallahu anha became very, very, very ill. To the extent that they feared for her life. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Uthman radiallahu anhu, go to your wife, tend to her, nurse to her, she needs you now. Even though that this was the battle of Badr, numbers were needed. But the haqq al haqq al zawja or the right of the wife at this particular time took precedence over what was there upon Uthman radiallahu anhu in going out for battle. So Uthman radiallahu anhu, he stayed with his wife, Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha. And the, the marad, the, the illness became so severe that it was just merely a matter of time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to take her away from him. That she was going to move on to the hereafter. But she longed and she desired to have one last liqa, one last meeting with her father Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but she did not have it in this dunya. So Uthman radiallahu anha, he was there to witness her last breath. And this was a musibah, not only one musibah, but two musibah. Two calamities that befell Uthman radiallahu anhu at this time. The first calamity is he lost, he lost his habib. He lost his beloved, Ruqayya radiallahu anhu. And the second musibah that came to him, what? The link between him and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was broken in terms of being an in-law related to him, alayhi salatu wasalam, in this manner. But of course, being the individual and the person that he was, he showed an amazing amount of sabr and patience. And this is from the sifat al-mu'mineen. This is from the attributes of the true believers. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً That when a musibah, a calamity, it befalls them, قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ that they say, indeed, we belong to Allah, and to Him we will return. So the Muslims, that they return from Badr victorious. And Uthman radiallahu anhu was facing this great or most difficult situation. To be happy, happy for the Muslims. To be happy for the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be alive. And the Muslims to be alive. But at the same time, he was feeling this great huzn, this great sadness with the parting of his beloved wife, Ruqayya radiallahu anha. Of course, she was buried in al baqiyah the graveyard which is very close to the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Uthman radiallahu anhu could not conceal his sadness. Not only that, as we have mentioned, that he lost his beloved, Ruqayya radiallahu anhu. And that he, this link between him and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was no longer there. But likewise, he felt as though he had missed out. Not denying Qadr, but he was not a direct participant of the Battle of Badr, which he desired so much to participate in. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Uthman radiallahu anhu, لَكَ أَجُرُ رَجُلٍ شَهِدَ بَدْرًا وَسَهْمُهُ That you will have the reward of a participant of Al-Badr. And you will participate in the distribution of the ghanima of the booty. So by consensus, that Uthman radiallahu anhu is seen from those who participated, who is part of the people of Badr. Even though he did not raise a sword to fight against the disbelievers. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa attested for him having the reward of a participant and having the reward of part of the booty. Just over a year later, the battle of Uhud. The battle of Uhud in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa with the companions, they went out to the uh, Jabal Uhud and they faced the Kuffar, the Quraysh, for a second time in the third year after Hijrah. After this battle, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he offered his second daughter, Umm Kulthum, to Uthman radiallahu anhu. 
And he was so overwhelmed with happiness that again he would have this link to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and marrying, of course, one of the daughters of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She is well known as Umm Kulthum and he remained married to her for about six years. And she also passed away in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the ninth year after Hijrah. As we mentioned, that she passed away radiallahu anha in the ninth year after Hijrah. And this took place in the, year, uh, the month of Sha'ban in the ninth year. Another aspect to us to get to know Uthman radiallahu anhu and to know these people is to know their lives not just to know their names but to know what they did what they participated in and that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that Uthman radiallahu anhu would be from who? from the people of Jannah Uthman fil Jannah Uthman is will be from the people of paradise. And that there are many other occasions that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave glad tidings. And Uthman radiallahu anhu took that position. When the Muslims, or especially the people of Muhajirun, when they arrived in Al-Medina, that the amount of fresh water that was available in Medina was not a lot. And there was one particular well called Bi'r Ruma. The will or the well of Ruma. And this belonged to a person in which it was his livelihood that he would sell the buckets of water to people. But this, of course, had some mashaqqa, some difficulty on the Muslims. That if they didn't have money, that they wouldn't have, avail- you know, have the access to this water. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man hafara rumatan falahu jannah Whoever will dig a well which is next to Roma, this, this particular well, then he will have Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ also said, Man yashtari Roma. Whoever purchases this particular well, then and share it with the believers and share it with the Muslims, then he will have a return for the reward in paradise. Before this ard, before this particular uh, was given, or this it was said by the Prophet wasalam, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to Sahib al Bi'r, the one who owned it, "Will you give it as a charity to the people, that the people will use it without any payment, and that you will have jannah?" That the person said, "I do not have anything else except this, Ya Rasulullah. I don't have anything else except this well for an income for me and my family." Then the Prophet ﷺ made this whoever purchases bi'r ruma then and distributes it to the Muslims and he will be from the people of Jannah. Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he purchased this well for 35,000 dirhams. And then he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Ya Rasulullah, will you promise me in return the same that you promised that person who owned it before? Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Bala, indeed. And then Uthman radiallahu anhu said, I purchased it and I give it to the believers, I give it to the Muslims. If you talk about humbleness, if you talk about shyness, if you talk about generosity, then we are talking about Uthman radiallahu anhu. The amount of people that were entering into the fold of Islam was increasing and increasing and increasing. That the land that was needed for the believers around the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ need to be purchased. And the Prophet ﷺ asked that who will purchase some of the land around the masjid so that we can make to expand the space of the masjid because it had become crowded. And that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man yashtari buqata ala fir'aun, ala fulan, fa yaziduha fi masjidi bi khayr, 
له منها في الجنة. That who will buy the land of so and so and add it to the masjid in return for something good for him in the Jannah, in the paradise. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he purchased a number of places around the masjid for it allowed or for it to be then expanded. This hadith or this narration is an authentic narration. In the ninth year after Hijrah, in which that there was settlement in the lands of the Muslims. But the Prophet ﷺ was approximately 60 or 61 years old. And that the Muslims and Islam was spreading, Alhamdulillah. But yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested them once more. And the news that the Roman Byzantine Empire had heard about the Muslims and their expansion wanted to take the first step into the lands, into the Arabian Peninsula, as opposed to the Muslims then extending their place into Asham and beyond. So the Prophet ﷺ, he made to the people, مَنْ جَهَّزَ جَيْشَ الْعُسْرَةِ فَلَهُ الْجَنَّةِ Who will help prepare the army of difficulty? Why? What's difficult about it? That it was in the hottest part of the summer. And that there was a drought, and that there was a difficulty amongst the Muslims. And it was at this particular time that the harvesting of a tamar, the harvesting of the dates was right now. But you had to leave right now. So you don't have much provisions, now is the time for harvesting. We don't have any weapons and so on and so forth, but who is going to give? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu ata kull mana. He gave all of his wealth. Umar Nisfu. Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, 4,000 dinar, gold. He said, What did you leave for your family, Abdul Rahman? He said, I gave to them or left half back for them. Then the Prophet وسلم, gave a sermon to the people Who will give something so we can prepare our armies? And that Uthman radiallahu anhu said, I will give a hundred camels. And that the Prophet ﷺ continued saying to the people, Who will give? And that Uthman radiallahu said, I will give 200 camels. Until Uthman radiallahu anhu, that he gave 940 camels. And he gave 60 of the best horses that he had. And he gave 4,000 dinar. This is what Uthman radiallahu anhu, what he gave. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said concerning Uthman at this time, مَا ضَرَّ عُثْمَان مَا عَمِلَ بَعْدَ الْيُوم مَا ضَرَّ عُثْمَان مَا عَمِلَ بَعْدَ الْيُوم That no deed can harm Uthman after today. After the sacrifice and the generosity he has shown today, no deed and nothing can harm him after this. رضي الله عنه There are many other hadith talking about the status of Uthman radiallahu anhu. For example, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was in his home with Aisha radiallahu anha. That there was a knock on the door. Man, it was Abu Bakr. And he came in, let him in. And that the Prophet alayhi wasallam was in his house in a relaxed state. Laying down. Abu Bakr radiallahu anh spoke to the Prophet salam until, he fil- until he had finished his knees and then he left. Then, then there was a second knock at the door. Who is it? It is Umar. Then, then let him come in. And then Umar radiallahu anh, then he came in. And then he spoke what he needed to speak and then he left. And then there was a third knock on a third occasion. Who is it? It was Uthman. On this occasion that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he fixed himself and he sat up and he covered his body. He covered either his thigh or his shin. And Aisha radiallahu anha, she noticed this, noticed this immediately. Ya Rasulallah, that Abu Bakr he came in and Umar that he came in 
and you didn't change the way that you were. This is the relationship that he had with Abu Bakr and Umar. A very relaxed way. But why did you change for Uthman? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ala astahi min rajulin, tastahi minhu al-malaika. Should I not be shy? Or should I not feel modest in front of a man whom the malaika, that they show modesty to? And that they are shy of? Waman al-malaika. لا يأسون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. They are they are those who uphold the command of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and they do everything without any form of disobedience. The the malaika are who حملتوا الأرش. That the angels are the ones who carry the throne of Ar Rahman. Who are the malaika? The malaika are. As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam describing Jibreel, له ستمائة جناح had six hundred wings. قد سد الأفق completely covered the horizon wherever he looked. That he saw Jibreel alayhi salam. The greatness of these malaika who were created from nur, created from light. That these great servants of Allah subhanahu wa taala. That they are shy in front of Uthman ibn Affan radiyallahu anhu. It's a hadith that you have heard before. I have no doubt. But at times just to ponder over ma'ana had al-hadith. Just to ponder over the meaning of that the malaika, that they are shy in front of that rajul. That they are shy in front of that man radiyallahu anhu. The amount of modesty and shyness وَالْحَيَاءُ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ And that bashfulness or shyness or modesty is from Iman. The more haya that you have, the stronger your Iman will be. وَإِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاسْنَعُ مَا شِئْتَ And that if you have no modesty or no shyness, then you will do as you wish. Or do as you wish. In another narration, Concerning this incident, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Inna inna Uthman a rajulun hayy," that indeed Uthman he is a shy man. Wa inni khashit that I feared that if I didn't change the state that I was in, that when he came in, he would be too shy to ask me if I was in this manner. The relaxed man that the Prophet Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in, if he saw me like this, he wouldn't ask me. He wouldn't, he wouldn't ask me his need. This is the way that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would understand his companions, that he treated the companions according to their needs and according to the way that they were. Because we as individuals, we are different. Yes, we treat everybody with justice and fairness and so on and so forth. But our mu'amala and how we deal with one person to another, and this is hikmah, this is wisdom, needs to change from one person to another. On one occasion, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was on an excursion with Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman radiyallahu anhu, that the Jabal Uhud began to shake. That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uskun ya Uhud. Keep still, O Uhud. And he said, he, the Prophet ﷺ, he tapped it with his foot. فَإِنَّ عَلَيْكَ نَبِي وَالصِّدِّيقِ وَشِهِيدًا That upon you is a prophet, a siddiq, and two martyrs. This of course is Bushra, glad tidings for these three people who went out with the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did he know ilm al-ghayb bil kulliyya? Did he know everything from the, in the future entirely? La. We say no. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did give Uthman radiallahu anhu, rather uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Prophet alayhi wa sallam some knowledge of some affairs that may occur in the future. Like ashratu sa'a, 
like some of the things that would happen before the coming of the hour. On one occasion, that Aisha radiallahu anha, she was spoken to by the Prophet alayhi salatu salam and he said to her, Udu Ali ba'd ashabi. Call to me a number of my companions. She radiallahu anha said, Abu Bakr? He said, La. Then she said, Uthman? He said, Naam, call Uthman for me. So Uthman, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began to converse with Uthman with a speech that la ya'lamuha illallah wa Uthman wa nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A conversation that came between Uthman and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uthman radiallahu anhu that the color in his face that it changed what was said to him radiallahu anhu. And he was asked what was said to you by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave me an advice and I will persevere with it and I will be patient with it. He had informed him of some of the things that was going to occur that towards the end of his life that would afflict him. As we know that after Umar radiallahu anhu, after he was martyred, that there was a shura. That there was a group of Muslims who were chosen, six of them, to choose the next Khalifa. Uthman radiallahu anhu was chosen to be the Khalifa al Muslimin, Amir al Mu'minin. And his reign over the Muslims was the longest out of the Khulafa al Arba. Out of the four rightly guided Khulafa, his Khilafa was longer than them all. Abu Bakr, two years and a bit. Umar radiallahu anhu, 10 and a bit. Uthman radiallahu anhu, 12, nearly 13 years. But during his Khilafah, he instilled many things which benefited the Muslims. The Muslims that they spread into the western areas, into North Africa, to Al Maghrib. And they went eastwards, up into Azerbaijan and Armenia and places like this. Hudayfa radiallahu anhu, he came back quickly to Uthman radiallahu anhu. He said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, inni akhaf. Verily, I am afraid. That what afflicted the Jews and the Christians, that it will afflict us. Ikhtalafu fil Quran, that they have differed over the Quran. Why? Da'afu al lisan. That they have differed over the Qur'an. Why? Because of the weakness of their tongue. Meaning what? The weakness of their Arabic. That the Muslims, of course, had spread into lands where their mother tongue wasn't Arabic. But with this, people had fallen into making mistakes into recitation of the Qur'an. People were saying that my recitation is better than yours. وَالْإِثْنَانِ عَلَى الْخَطَأ and both of them are in mistake. <coughs> so he said, Ya Amir al muminin we need to do something to bring them together. So Uthman radiallahu anhu again made shura amongst his companions what they should do. And they called for the Mus'haf that was in the possession of Hafsa radiallahu anha, which was of course compiled at the time of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And the decision was made to make the Quran in qira'atin wahida in one recitation. That if they were to differ in anything, that they will go back to the language of the Quraysh. This is one of the greatest achievements of Uthman radiallahu anhu during his Khilafah, along with spreading the Muslim lands, opening the lands and taking them out of Zulumat into Nur. Taking them out of Ibadatul Asnan, Ibadatul Insan, Ibadatul Mal, Ibadatul Nisa, Ila Akhir. Taking them away from the worship of men, the worship of women, the worship of wealth, the worship of the dunya, to Ibadatullah, to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the great work that Uthman radiallahu anhu that he did. And his khilafah was very different from Umar. And he attested to this. 
that Umar radiallahu anhu as a khalif was very, very strong. But he said, he had by his own admission, who can rule like Umar led? Who can do it like Umar did it? I cannot do that. So Uthman radiallahu anhu by his nature was softer in his approach, had a different way of dealing with things. So, in the year 35 after Hijrah, and there were a number of years of fitan, there were a number of years of differences that appeared. وَعَلَى رَأْسِهِ مَنَ الْهَدَ of that an individual, a shaytan called Abdullah ibn Saba al-Munafiq. Abdullah ibn Saba, who was originally a Jewish man from Al-Yemen. And he put on himself libas al-Islam, the clothes of al-Islam, and was with the Muslims. And he, among with his followers, went between Egypt and went to al-Iraq and stated that the people in Iraq, that they're living so much better than you in Egypt. And people in Egypt, the people in Iraq are living so much better than you, that the Khalifa is being unjust to you. Southern factions were brought about. Dissension was brought about in the Muslim lands. Until, and this is by the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond our understanding. But we know with certainty, fi thalika, hikmah. In these ahadath and these ongoings, that there is a wisdom in that. That believe it or not, al Medina, the capital of the Islamic Empire, was besieged by rebels. That they waited for the time of Hajj, when the majority of people that they won the pilgrimage, led by Abdullah ibn Sab'a, this munafiq, this hypocrite, when the dissension was quite deep now, after a number of years of plotting and planning. That there was, a base, there was a siege on the Khalifa of the Muslims, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. So these rebels, they besieged Medina for a month. Why the majority of Muslims, they were away in Hajj and so on and so forth. So these people, they besieged the house of the Khalifa, Uthman radiallahu anhu. Uthman radiallahu anhu, this individual who every Jum'ah would go and he would buy, he would find that he was a slave who belonged to somebody. Who is your master? Fulan. He would go to that person and said, is so and so, is he going to buy him? So then he would purchase him. Every Jum'ah he would free that person. The following Jum'ah he would buy one slave and then free one. Uthman radiallahu anhu, the individual that when he performed ghusl, he would still wear his izar. He'd still wear his garment around himself when performing ghusl. And that he would do it sitting and would not do it standing, radiallahu anhu. This sahabi, radiallahu anhu, that he would complete the Qur'an fi raka'atin wahida. And that the person said, what happened to the second raka'ah? He said, it was in my witter. Imagine completing the Qur'an in one raka'ah. For us, it seems unreal. What is that? But these are the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. This is the one, radiallahu anhu, that he wouldn't wake up his servants to get the water for his wudu. That he would do it himself. And he would say, let them yartah, let them relax. This is the time for them to relax. This is the one that when he went past the qabr, that he would cry, cry until his beard would become very wet. And then they would say to Ya Uthman, why is it that we mention Danar and so on and so forth that we don't see you cry on every occasion? But when you meet the qabr, you see the qabr, you immediately cry. He said, this is the first step that everyone will face. This is the first step. 
So the Khalifa, Uthman radiallahu anhu, at this time is how old now? 82 years old. And he's the Khalifa. Thousands and thousands of people under his, under his rule. And these rebels, they came. And they entered the house of the Khalifa. And what did he begin doing? He began praying. And what did he recite? Some verses from Taha. Surah Taha. And when he had completed that, that he put the masahif in front of him. And the adu he came in, the enemy he came in, he said, Baini wa bainaka kitabullah. That he expected and he knew that these people, that they were going to come, and they'd come for one reason, to kill him. That Uthman radiallahu anhu, he told the other companions to go back, because you may be asking, where is everybody? He said to the companions, stay away. Go back. I don't want your protection. He was expecting this moment. This is the moment that he was expecting to leave this dunya. And when the enemy came and struck him, and he fell down, and he fell down on some of the masahif that was in front of him. And what ayah and the, the page that he was on, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَسَيَكْفِيكُهُمُ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ سَمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice you against them. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all hearer, the all knower. And how many times when you open the mushaf, that you see an ayah, and it is an ayah which just is right for you right now. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that ayah right there for you, right this situation for you subhanallah. How many times that occurs? Because this is not a book of anyone. This is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the attachment that the companions radiallahu anhum that they had was an attachment to a book that no one can ever ever imagine. Imagine now that brothers here, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase you in your endeavor to memorize the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine now you're spending five or six or seven days. It's a sacrifice for you to memorize and to understand some of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine your whole life is like this dedicated to the Qur'an. Every day. But yet you still have your family and you still have your work. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places barakah in your time. Imagine that. You don't need to take a, a week out or two or three days out. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you to have time every single moment in your life a portion of your day that you can dedicate to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lakin qallat al barakah. Some of the barakah has disappeared from many people. But you are the jeel al jadid. You are the generation. And what, you, what I see that you're doing is like jihad. It's like a great sacrifice and a struggle that you are doing. How many shabab are willing? to sacrifice their holidays, quote-unquote. But you, you come to the masjid and you memorize the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكَ فَضُّ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ This is a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to only some of his servants. He doesn't give it to many people. He doesn't give this hub, this love of his book. It is not given to many people. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed something in you that maybe this is the something that will be a changing time in your life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Maybe this after this door or something that you do like this, it might be even you attending a dars or something happens to you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you to change the direction of your life. How many people they start something at the beginning of the day in the morning, and they are full of ma'asi. And by the evening they have repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should be constantly asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to soften our hearts and open our hearts to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something we should always be doing. So Uthman radiallahu anhu, he was martyred in his own home. 
with his own wife, Naila, radiallahu anhu, defending him. And then Abdullah ibn Zubair, radiallahu anhu, he prayed of his janazah. And then, of course, the next Khalifa, Ali radiallahu anhu, starts another chapter in the Islamic history. But it's upon these names, naftakhiru bihim. These names and these people and these jibal, that we are proud of them. And that these are people whom we look up to. And these are the names that we give to our children. My son is Uthman, and my son is Umar. And my son is Abu Bakr, and my son is Ali. And my son is Abdullah, and my son is Muhammad. These are our children. And these are our daughters of Fatima, Umm Kulthum, and Ruqayya. These are the people that we want to raise. That Islam will return. And Islam will return victorious, with you or without you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are part of that victory. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast upon the, the deen al-haq. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa alaikum